Are you ready to be inspired? Well, here's your chance because today I'm here with DJ Wizar, who by the age of 19 was fluent in English, German, French, Spanish, and Russian. And that's not all. He could also converse in eight other languages. So let's listen to his story. And I'm sure there's a lot that you could take away from it and apply to your own language learning journey. So TJ, tell me, how old were you? When you learned your first language, what was that language and why did you learn it? So I was 13. I decided that I wanted to learn Mandarin Chinese because we were going on a choir trip, uh, a group of 30 boys and I. And I wanted to learn the language. I wanted to figure out if I could interact with the locals. And so I did. I ended up being the only boy out of 30 that was able to speak with the local choir when we were in Xinyang, for example. And after that, I just was hooked. How was their reaction to you compared to the other students? Well, all the other kids, they just had to like smile and nod and say, uh, xie xie, xie xie. that was all they knew. But me, I could, they would ask me questions like, uh, 你们有没有草吗在美国? Like, <laughs> do you guys have grass? Like, of course we do. But it was just those cute little things. And I just realized how, how large the world is and how, how curious we all are about one another. And mm -hmm. I wanted to get to the bottom of that in each language, in each culture, in each country that I visited. So, so really that experience was motivation to go to your next language. And what was the next language? Yeah, after China, I, I went with Farsi because I had a friend in Arizona that was Iranian. And I remember going to uh, birthday parties with him, like Tavalodet Mubarak. That's the happy birthday in Farsi. And I'd have amazing soirees learning Iranian. And then after that, I had a, another good friend who is from Slovakia. Oh. And I went there and I did bike rides with him and I got to know his family. And we went around the Slovak countryside. And that was more of the, the childhood in me, going to Slovakia. I'm just going to stop here to tell you, this is Slovakia. And then after that, Spanish, Portuguese, French, the classics. And then I continued with Russian when I did interviews and Arabic when I went to Egypt. So it just never stopped after that. I just wanted to keep going with languages. I wanted to keep understanding people that were so different from me because I'm from Arizona. I grew up in a desert, uh, mostly English speaking. Yeah, we have some Spanish, of course, but I wanted to hear people that lived on completely different sides of the world or even in Mexico, Guatemala, these countries that are just they, they're so rich in culture, in people, and, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to be able to tell those stories to people with my YouTube channel. Right. I wanted to be able to take those stories for my own self. I, I've taken a look at your YouTube channel. It's really fascinating. It seems that at a very young age, you started to look into endangered languages mm. or less spoken languages. Could you tell us about that? Yeah. So it started uh, in Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan, the Caucasus. Ooh. And I showed up in Yerevan. Okay, okay so you oh. spoke Russian when you were there. Because I was there and I only spoke Russian because I couldn't speak those languages. Yeah, the first time I went there, I only knew Russian because I, ha I, I had no, there was no way for me to learn Georgian, Armenian and Azerbaijani in like six months. They're completely different from one another, different families. So yeah, I settled with Russian. But I went to different villages, different towns, filming with my dad and my friend from school. And we looked for these endangered languages like Pontic Greek. And uh, we just went around different villages. We looked for Azerbaijanis and Armenia and all these anomalies and ancient so peoples. So how did the people react to you when, you when you went there and said, I'm looking for a speaker of X and X language? A lot of them would celebrate. They would be like, finally, someone is interested in what we have to share. It's uh -huh. like we've been waiting to you know, bring this back after decades of just not really being able to share so this. So part of the motivation is a certain connection that you get when you speak somebody's language. Like Nelson Mandela said, when you speak to oh, someone man. in their language they understand, it goes their head. When you speak to them, their language goes their heart, right? Exactly. What do you have to say about that? And I actually use that quote in my first documentary because that was the exact purpose, the message I was trying to share with those videos, that we can, we can learn languages but English, English. if we learn the specific languages, the ones that touch people's hearts, their native languages, the languages of their childhood, their first love, their, their first, uh, the death of a loved one, when you can really tap into those emotions, mm. you can hear stories from anywhere, from a number of people. And people will open up to you too. Mm -hmm. And that's what I realized, that people, 
they're, they're willing to open up if you take the first step to understand them and to show that you care. Mm -hmm. And I did that like with Pontic Greek mm -hmm. in Armenia, and then I continued in Egypt, in, in Guatemala. I remember visiting the leader of the Garifuna tribe in Guatemala. It's a tribe of about 12,000 people, and they, they're quite marginalized. Life is pretty difficult for them, and they're trying to hold on to their culture. And to put context, they're this group of people from the Caribbean, uh, but they look African-American or black, and they look like they were either from Africa or... But nobody knows. And what's fascinating is I got to meet the village leader, and he told me that he's, he knows the truth. And this truth has been hiding for hundreds of years. I got the truth from the leader, or whatever he claimed. But stuff like that, it's fascinating. Yeah, definitely. I get stories, I get anecdotes, and you can only get that if you learn okay, languages. Okay, I'm, I'm getting a very strong feeling. You, we can see why he learned languages, because it, he connected with people who are so fascinated by it. But how did you do it? I mean, okay, from age 13 to basically, not, you just turned 20, so it's 13 to 19. How could you study so many languages? Did you study every day, or how did you, you balance with school, etc.? Could you give some uh, tips for people out there who are just starting out on perhaps their first foreign language or going to the second or third? Oh, of course. For me, it started with... Um the discipline, being able to say, okay, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to study Farsi for the next 21 days, wherever I get with that, perfect. And I, after 21 days, if I want to continue with it, perfect. But I need to give myself a plan, a structure and say, okay, I have to do this, this, this and, and this every day. I remember before I went to Armenia, I would do an italki at five or six in the morning before school started because I'd have to work after school to make money for the trips, right? Mm -hmm. So... I, I would do Armenian studies and then Russian in the afternoon after work and school and maybe do some Russian reading in lunchtime. So I'd have to structure my days in a way that I could put language here, sprinkle it there. Maybe. So discipline and scheduling is important. Yeah, even at a young age. And mm -hmm. I know that it's, it's difficult when we're at this age when time is of the abundance. For mm -hmm. someone like me, I have a, gobbles of time. I, I can wake up and do nothing for an entire day because it's the weekend and I don't really have to pay bills until recently. So it's like being able to structure at a young age is very important. But then there's also the other side. You can structure all you want, but if you don't have the passion, the love for yeah. the language, mm -hmm. if there's not something calling you to continue learning that language more than two weeks or a month, just a fling or a, a crush on a language, if you don't have that love, then there's really nothing that will keep you on that schedule. And for me, each language that I've learned, I've been in love with it. Mm -hmm. It's been a lifelong relationship and I've grown with the language. With Russian, I've gone on so many adventures. With French, I've had so many friends. I've been to Paris in different contexts with different people, with Italian, with Portuguese even. I have just stories with each of these languages. And well, doesn't that make it easier to remember? I know personally when I have uh, exciting experiences or emotional connections with people using the language, it really helps that language sink in and, and stay with me. Yeah, the language itself, it's, it's just a set of data. It's a set of words and grammar, but it doesn't come to life until you put a person, until you put a face to that language, especially if you put a lot of faces to that language. That's when you become a, a fully rounded person in a foreign language. For me with Russian, for example, I've gone to Georgia, Armenia, the Caucasus, Ukraine, Russia, all over the former Soviet Union, just to be able to have a full expertise of this language, but also make it personal, mm -hmm. to understand the modern side of Russia, the classical side, the Soviet side. You have to understand yeah. the full the perspectives of the language to fully embrace it and make it Definitely. your own, Definitely. and then add to it if you get mm -hmm. to a certain level. Mm -hmm. And for me, yeah, with Russian, with these five languages you mentioned especially, they're ones that I've made my own, I've made my identity, and mm. I've also added Farsi to that, Chinese, I'm, I'm getting there with them. You're using German now in uh, Austria, right? You're studying at university there, right? Yeah, now I'm getting into a university life. So I've been traveling for the past two years, going all over the globe, but I've settled down. I want to get a degree in international relations, but this is great because I also get to have a lot more time and a structured uh, day to be able to get back into languages that I love mm -hmm. and, and refresh them and, and maintain them. The best part about 
uh, being in college is that there's also so many people from everywhere. Yeah. So practice yes. is free. Yes. I don't have to yes. call people online yes. anymore like I did when I was a kid in yes. Arizona. Mm -hmm. Now I just, I, I have friends from, if I need to practice Farsi, I know someone. I know many people. Right. If I need to practice German, I live in Austria. It's, it's free. Mm -hmm. So languages, they're constantly alive for me now. Mm -hmm. And I don't expect that to change as I grow up. Mm -hmm. Besides all these uh, exciting adventures and connecting with people, what about any monetary benefits? I think you have a YouTube channel. That, has that helped your travels, earning money from the YouTube channel? Yeah, I've been able to make money with the videos. I see you have a million views on one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a few of the videos, they get popular because the stories are so strong. And I take that money and I... I pay for the next trip and I try to tell the next story. But then on the other side, I also get to write books because of my stories. I get to, yeah, learn languages, share these things with friends. And I also am able to take the money and, yeah, turn it into this mm -hmm. little empire of, mm -hmm. of being able to look for endangered languages, write books that's about that's adventure. And that's what, I, that's what I dreamed of when I started this when I was young. So actually, I met TJ on the way to the Polyglot Gathering in Poland, we met on the train, and he said he recognized me. I did. And I was, I was pleased by that. You saw my videos from the past or something. It's also not every day you uh, run into someone that switches languages every other sentence <laughs> up until like 20 different languages. So yeah, I knew it was you, Tim. <laughs> you weren't hiding. You weren't fooling anyone. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I remember when I was younger, I... I watched you speaking Sherpa, and there's a lot of polyglots that speak tons of European languages. You can speak all the Slavic languages in the world, all the Romance languages, but it's when someone learns Sherpa, or Nepali <laughs> even, tamang. or Tamang, <laughs> languages of the Himalayas. That's fascinating. For me, it's always been Native American languages. Mm. I've always loved a good Navajo or... If, if I were in the U.S., maybe for me, but I... I, I that's your side of yeah, the world. Yeah, that's my side of the world, <laughs> living in Japan. Well, thank you so much. If you could just give perhaps uh, some final words to you know, learners who are just starting off in learning foreign languages, what, what would you say? It gets good this, the day you start. Even the rote learning, you'll come to love it. You'll come to love the, the waking up every day and, and feeling like you can't speak the language, feeling like the accent is too hard. You'll, you'll come to love the beginning of the journey, and then you'll really come to love the end of the journey. When you meet new friends, when you unlock relationships, when you connect with people that you never would have been able to had you never learned a language. Had I just learned English, my life would be quite dull. But because I learned all of these languages, some just to a simple level like Georgian, but others to like Russian, I've been able to expand the way I see this world and not be afraid of it either. I'm not afraid of being alive on this planet because I know that I can belong anywhere I go. Mm -hmm. And that is a superpower in itself. And, and TJ has some great stories. Take a look at his channel. Absolutely. Uh, I really love your story about being in Russia. I have quite mm -hmm. a few of mine in the old Soviet Union. I haven't been to Russia since uh, it uh, since is Brezhnev. no longer part of the <laughs> Soviet Union. Okay, yeah. so thank you very much, TJ. Thank you so much. Yes. Always a pleasure. It's a pleasure.